before uh, Dr. Sastrabuddha takes over, I would like to remind you that uh, I have not yet assigned the equivalent of seminar topics to those eight or ten uh, students who have not registered for a regular semis uh, seminar. There were at least two people who have indicated their choice of topic on which they would like to conduct the literature survey, which is okay. For others, I'll be circulating the detailed list uh, to individuals, uh, perhaps by this Sunday evening. Uh, all others who are doing uh, regular seminars, have you started work on your literature survey portion? Not yet seriously. Month of January is gone. All right. Let's do it as part of this course, if not as part of the regular seminar. Or are you now dependent upon this course to conduct your seminar for you? My God. That is not fair. You have to independently work anyway. So to begin with, there will be assignments to be submitted. Two assignments, as I had mentioned. One assignment is a list of 50 odd research papers, plus minus a few, which you will quickly search on the net relevant to your topic and accumulate all the relevant information as was outlined in one sheet. Namely, the details of the authors, where the paper was published, if it was published on web, the date you visited, and the downloaded paper that you must have with you, and the abstract. Just this, 50 odd papers which you believe are relevant. The second stage will require you to actually slice these down and concentrate on five to six papers more thoroughly. How many of you have seen the both the lectures by Sahana Murthy? Not very many. Two, three. How many of you have seen the first lecture at least? A few more. Not good enough. The flip classroom requires you to view the lectures. But anyway, currently we are concentrating on this particular portion. So have it. Uh, but next, uh, uh, next Tuesday is the lecture, right? Next, uh, no, next uh, Tuesday, right? So by next Tuesday, I would be ready with an assignment which is different from what Professor uh, Dr. Sastrabuddha is doing. And there I will describe this. So don't waste your time in looking at the literature review lectures as of now. Concentrate on this work. But I'll give you timelines and deadlines by which you must observe. How many of you have seen your own five-minute talk? How many of you have seen the five-minute talk of someone else? Aha, good, good, good. So what was the general... Uh, Comparison, good, bad, ugly. How, how do you fare vis-a-vis -vis others? I, I, visual, I viewed some talks, not all. A few of them were excellent actually. Some were downright bad. But that's okay. As I said, the idea is for you to know this. Subsequent to Dr. Sastrabuddha's lectures, I propose to give a few hints on public speaking myself so that you'll be better prepared for a public presentation of your technical topics later. Over to you, sir. Uh, so everybody uh, has a copy of a mind map in their hand, right? And are you sure it is not the one you have submitted? Does anyone have their own mind map in their hands? No. Great. That was the idea. So, uh, Omkar, can you just get going about the small activity we have? So, you all have uh, one copy of uh, mind map. So, first step that you have to do is that uh, just go through that mind map and uh, imagine if you are supposed to draw the same mind map then what you will do. So, you have to just put two marks like uh, right or wrong, check or uh, cross it and whenever you are Draw your alternative, what you believe is the correct one, right? Any doubt for this step? To begin with, 
to assess somebody else's mind map you have to get into their minds <laughs> and therefore you have to actually examine that topic and think afresh that will require some 2 3 minutes time yeah you can ask because this these so, uh, topics that day we discussed little bit so they are aware that is not a new topic yeah, so these but are not new topic but they have you heard about have it. applied your mind to the topic which you are assessing today so just spend 2 minutes in looking at that what it does and then as he suggested find out what you feel is right find out what you feel is wrong and if you feel something is wrong it should be replaced by what or why it is wrong and whether something needs to be added so you are assessing somebody else's mind map on a topic with which you are all expected to be familiar general so examine that and make your comment that's the exercise the group has to come sort of together if you are too many in the group one of them in the corner might have to stand and come nearer to see that because you won't be able to see all of that together okay so i see a lot of people writing notes on that this is not done that is not done so which is correct but uh, i also expect that you circle the part which is actually wrong so instead of writing a overall comment that the formatting is not followed this doesn't look like a mind map this looks like a tree so instead of that circle the part which is wrong is there uh, some mind map which is which is drastically wrong like i saw some people saying uh, what we was given to us was not a mind map itself it was a flow chart or it was something else but not a mind map but it can be a concept map also so that's okay but uh, any any grossly uh, wrong or a different mind map what uh, than what you expected out of it if i if you were supposed to create that mind map anybody has a very strong opinion about what was given to them but most of the people were talking about the rearrangement part now spend one more minute in in trying to see the interconnections between the topics written so right now i saw everybody doing the the tree structure right so this comes under that or not but now try to see if level 3 of something is actually level 1 or it is connected to level 1 directly it has a effect on that so uh, try to see if there is some such connection so there is a interlinkage between something present on the mind map but not connected at all they have not shown any connection to those things uh, like what we saw that there was a advantage of uh, there would be zero mosquitoes if we have proper waste management it is not connected to advantage part so something like that if you can spot okay so what we want is that after uh, before you leave from the class you can just submit those things back and we'll upload them for the respective groups to have a look at what comment they have received for their mind maps and uh, because the next assignment is based on what you have submitted there so we'll go ahead and we'll see that once we have the level of mind maps or we have a kind of broader outline about what is going to be presented then how do you come to the presentation stage where you actually shape up the plan so we are actually at the execute stage of what we discussed earlier about plan execute and impress we are at the execute stage where after you are you have brainstormed and you have lots of ideas in place you have actually tried to map them using mind maps or affinity maps the way you want to do it but then how you go to uh, the actual presentation now here there are different uh, options available actually how you want to present it i am going to talk about the slide presentation for the sake of this class and we are going to discuss various modes also but i am going to uh, talk for maybe next 20 minutes about the use of the moment you you come to the presentation stage there is definite requirement of adding some visuals to your presentation so just text will not suffice at times but adding visuals for anything and everything also will not work so there has to be a rule which helps you decide what kind of visuals should be used and how and when we should use which kind of visuals so for that let's just uh, 
we'll maybe spend another 20 minutes on that. So there are there are various graphics available and there are types of graphics in fact and there are definitions of what type of graphics are uh, existing and they are categorized very well. This is a research by uh, famous people uh, Clark and Mayer in the area of visuals for e-learning so, or even visuals for learning so they call it visuals for learning. So from that this is what they come up with. They, they have functions associated with the types of visuals. Maybe this is not very clear, but we are going to see examples of this. The most uh, non-useful way of using graphics for all of us, because we are into uh, technical presentations and, and scientific presentations, the one which has to be always avoided for this kind of thing is the decorative graphic. This is the most easy usage of this is seen in newspapers where you have a news and they can put any file photograph or just anything about share market, they can put the same graph anywhere. Whether it, the trend is up or down, they really don't care. They just put that graph and uh, the, the matter will be some completely absurd at times. So it's only to catch the attention of the reader that there is something happening about the sensex going up or down. But the actual information is not presented in that graph, so it is only a decorative graphic. We don't have to even think about these type of graphics because we are not going to use them at all. The second stage is where uh, the function activity or the concept is represented in a certain way. And uh, one of the latest examples of that is a screenshot. Because however uh, articulate uh, you are in explaining what is happening, a screenshot will speak volumes about what you are actually trying to say. So if on right click something appears on that and there is a drop down which appears and you have to select certain thing, it's easy to have a screenshot there and explain it in terms of its functionality. Similarly, a photograph gives you a real life um, explanation about the proportions or uh, color and other things. So these are called representational graphics. There is an interesting type of graphic called mnemonic graphic. So how many people actually remember, so if I ask how many days in August, a lot of people do this. And this is visual and uh, memory associated with it. And then uh, you can easily come back to the answer because you have associated this visual with the count of days in the month. So these kind of graphics are used in education, especially for children where you have to say C for cat and if that is shown in a particular format, the retention power is found very high. Organizational graphics are most of the time used in the form of maps and uh, these maps can uh, show you the qualitative relationship. So you can only say that hostel 12 is really far away from the main gate but you cannot actually say unless and until the distances are to the scale and given properly, you cannot say how much. But you can at least say that, okay, it is far away as compared to Crescent. So that much you can say and that's called where you can just establish a qualitative relationship. But if you want a quantitative relationship, then what can be used? Right. So you can use graphs, pie charts. But this will definitely show you the, the qualitative relationship, uh, quantitative relationships. And further down, when you have something which has a change over time. These graphics are called transformational graphics. So where you can say step one, step two, step three, what happens when the weight is going down or up, these are called transformational graphics and these are very useful when you have to say stages or you have to show changes over time. So this is, uh, the last one is about interpretation. So. You have to explain a particular process which has multiple stages and not only this. So there are not just one variable here like okay you do this then this, this happens. So it's only one variable right now. If you have multiple variables acting at the same time and things are going to change because of that, that is the time you use something called interpretive graphics. So you use all sorts of arrows, you use colors, you use uh, maybe some text annotation along with it but then that helps in explaining what will happen if these, 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 these things will happen. So <clears throat> this is the type of graphic which is uh, used mostly for explaining processes, longer processes which, which have to be. But 
when it comes to data which is regularly our requirement, it will be mostly the, the graphs and uh, pie charts. So I have some uh, interesting examples about that. But this you can just keep in mind. I am going to upload this slide so you do not have to really write it down. But uh, this is a very broad level classification and mapping done. So for what type of data should the uh, corresponding graphic be? So this is a very broad level but it has been proven over and above uh, so many years that uh, how organizational graphics typically help in explaining process or a procedure. So these are the things which are for uh, the dyna uh, for the static graphics. So we use images most of the time here. But there are dynamic visuals also. You can have videos, you can have animations, you can have interactive graphics also nowadays. So where you can input something and see the change yourself. So these, these come at a higher level but depends on what type of presentation you are doing. So if you are writing a research paper probably you do not have the luxury of having a video inside that. So how do you show that? So that is the time when interpretive graphics are mostly useful because you can show the entire procedure even in one graphic or at the best transformational graphics where you can show stages of what was happening instead of drawing just one image. So these are the types of graphics which can be uh, mapped to the specific content. And uh, this is a very popular example of how the textual uh, information gets converted to the uh, graphical information and it is more user friendly because we can see the changes quite easy. But while making these changes, I have seen lot of people making very common mistakes. One of the common mistake is this. So typically this is a kind of a table I can see in a very um, kind of amateurish uh, papers. So what is the biggest problem you can see here? What would be uh, to, to understand the data? The decimal point is, is very, very oddly written. So it should be always written in this format that becomes pretty easy. And these are the tools which are offered by the software itself. You do not have to really apply your mind for, for inventing something. But only care has to be taken in terms of converting this to a uniform way so that it does not look shabby or non-readable or non-understandable. Similarly, when graphs are made, you give data to Excel and it generates some kind of a graph. But it is very difficult to interpret this graph simply because the, the threshold is bad, right? So if you just uh, zoom it to the points which, which are not relevant, you just remove those. Why to keep all the other points and then just get a proper graph which can show you the transformations at the right points. So these graphics will, will actually can make or break your presentation and that has been seen over and above. Most of the presentation I have seen especially for seminar and types, apart from the data presented, the either they are completely bland without any, uh, any graphic which, which is necessity at times. But use of decorative graphics unnecessarily is also a big issue. So whatever commonly available free GIFs are there are, are actually splashed all over the place for no rhyme or reason, but that just creates a clutter and a noise which, which the presenter has created on its own and the readers or the people who are watching the presentation do not want to see all that. So, okay. so before we move on to the assignment, here is, here is one way of, uh, because this question is commonly asked in, uh, so when you think of a presentation, there are three typical types of presentation. One is the slides which when you do uh, slide 1 followed by slide 2 and if you start some topic here, you do the direct extension of that. There are some people who will go to the sorter view where you will see all the slides together and probably later on they will organize this, right? So this is one type of thing. How many people also think in a way that this is my outline? So I go by topic and they, uh, there are parts of my presentation which will have from introduction up to results. So I have these, uh, these points and I will write these things first and then I will populate these slides. This is another way. And there is a third type of category of people who think 
in the mind map fashion. So they say, this is my central idea. So these are my different bullet points, these different sections. And then there could be some additional sections here. And later on, if I want, I can actually pick this and make into a new section. So this is the third type of thinking which, which happens. Uh, I want you to tell us which type of thinking goes in your mind when you plan a presentation of your own. So you have to actually pair up with your friend nearby and uh, then if you have a contrasting opinion, you convince. If you have the same opinion, you can tell me about why that you feel, why you feel that that is the best option to think of. So you can think in these three directions and uh, tell us what is the way you envisage your presentations. Less there is some confusion about these dashes. These are not contents of the same slide. These are additional slides to buttress that. Because you did not draw those, so that is why that would be some one. Uh, I have to leave for another uh, engagement, but I just wanted to tell you a few things about these use of graphics in your written and presentation material. Most of you, when you present the survey of any literature or when you are talking about that literature and giving the graphs or figures, etc., etc., do not quote the reference below each figure. It is mandatory. If the figure is not drawn by you, then apart from the reference citation for other material, for every figure and for every graph, you must indicate the source independently. We Indians do not think of these as important things at all. But if you don't do that, it is considered academic criminal act. Criminal act. Please understand and appreciate this. They are referring to somebody else's diagram or whatever, and you must refer. That's, it's a respect and honor that somebody else has done that work, which you are using to elaborate your point. That is not. Second, many times when you give examples, you not only retain the entire example as it is, you don't even bother to change it to make it suitable for Indian viewers. I have seen umpteen examples of database tables which have human beings named as John, Sandra, etc., etc. We do have such names, but there are n number of other common names which very quickly indicate to you that these examples you have constructed based on the people around you. So remember this. Okay. Number one, if you cite if, if you use any graph or paper, you must, a graph or image or anything, you must acknowledge it independently, saying source. Such and such. You can give the reference citation. And second, in your presentations, try to articulate using your own example. Construct examples. In fact, when you construct an example out of a ready-made example, actually you apply your mind there. And the best of my knowledge, you will enhance your own learning about that when you try to construct it. There's these two points I wanted to say. Okay, uh, how many people for one? Have they have been doing that or how many people for two? Okay, so do you use uh, uh, JS? Uh, uh, maybe I have one. I have seen one utility which actually allows you to even present it in that same format, which I have now started using extensively. How many people for three? Maybe only, uh, is it before the last class or? Uh, so when we had a mind map, oh, even earlier. Okay, great. So, so this is, this is the most preferred model, right? So you, you, you write outline and then populate these things, right? So uh, I'm going to talk about the tools which can be used for all three types. You don't, I don't have to, it's not a big uh, surprise what should be used for the type one. And that's very commonly used. Any slide presentation tool will allow that. But for two and three, there are uh, recently developed tools which can allow you to actually present it in a 
in an interesting manner. So I'll, I'm going to share some of them in the next class. Probably I'll also post the links for that <coughs> on uh, Moodle. So the, the target for next class is to, to convert your mind map to a presentation. <coughs> and now uh, that is the time you should actually use any one of these preferred models, what you feel. And I'm, uh, I, as I said, uh, there are tools like Prezi or something which you can use for uh, creating a mind map based presentation, which will actually look like a presentation at the end of the day, but you can actually construct a mind map of your own. And uh, there are tools like reveal.js or slides.com, which will allow you to create that type of presentation, where you can do the outline as well as the, the vertical part. And the presentation actually gives you four side arrows to, to browse from any direction instead of going. So at any point you want to go horizontal, you can go that, that way. So that is a useful tool. You can think of these two tools also in case you want to, but there are some limitations to both of them. Uh, they have some proprietary problems, but you can definitely do some presentations there at least. So this is, this is for the assignment of the next time when you will have the <laughs> presentation converted from the mind map what you have submitted. In between, we'll try to upload the comments received from the, the other peers who have written on, on your papers. We'll try to submit that. Um, the major challenge will still remain to map it to the original one. Let's see how we can solve that. And once we do that, you can modify the presentation accordingly and, and make it available. So you have to submit that presentation maybe a day before the class, or maybe we can take it for one more, uh, we can give longer deadline this time because you may uh, want to go through the next class, which is about the impress part and then make your presentation better. So, okay, so not for Tuesday's class, the presentation's deadline would be for the next Thursday. So we will have some time in between. And once we are done with that, then we will evaluate the presentations. These presentations, by the way, you can retain, but the style of what you have learned in this can be utilized for your final presentation which was which is to be recorded like you have done the initial presentations five minute presentations now you will be supposed to do another five minute presentation at the end of the course so you can think of uh, using any kind of tools at that time and you can start preparing for that so that you know what kind of difference you have gone through after going through the courses so okay so let's come back to some feedback about one versus uh, two versus three. So people who are who are of the opinion for two can just share their points. Okay, so somewhere here, what is your option? So first, it is modular, so it's easy to grab. Ah, you go with the. Okay, any advantages? Yeah, because it is modular, it's easy to grasp, and uh, other people can correlate. Okay, what are the points you are going to? Grab. Okay, how how often do you do you come back to outline? Uh, probably. Yeah. Okay, is there any time you realize, uh, in sense, uh, okay, so let's get a view point for somebody who uses mind mapping, the third one, and then we, I'll ask that, okay, so here. So can you tell us advantages over two it has, one and two probably. Uh, whenever you are going into a category and uh, explaining something, and uh, you'll be coming to the outline back, and like, it's like a story going on. Okay. Like, uh, the, the overall view will be conveyed every now and then. So after completing the whole presentation, you'll be having a pretty much good idea about it. Okay. How many people will agree to this point that you can choose this strategy based on the topic you are going to, uh, you are going to present? So how many times the topic decides your strategy of presentation? Or it will always be this. You believe that strategy will change according to the topic, right? Uh, irrespective of topic, you will still go with this, right? Uh, for you, will you go with two always? Okay, it is it is a choice of uh, individual. Actually speaking, there is no right or wrong answer for this, and there is nothing. Uh, yeah, you have a point. One more advantageous point, maybe for two is, uh, as of now, there are like more open source tools available for two kind of presentations. Three is still kind of proprietary software, are there? Yeah. So I have seen many people um, adapting to the presentation based on their uh, personal uh, 
comfort zone. So if somebody is, is comfortable with drawing a mind map, then they will, they will do a presentation using mind map for any topic. As against, there are some people who are technology driven. So if they are, they are accustomed to a particular technology, they can do the similar thing using that. But at every point, I have also seen people taking this call based on the context. So if, if you have a particular topic which is, which is actually spread over like this, then it suddenly becomes easy to, to draw that first and then, and then go ahead. Or if it is fairly simple of introduction and problem statement and this, that, they would probably resort to uh, a very simple technique rather than going into this detail. So it depends on uh, the context as well as the technology availability and your comfort of using that technology. But I thought it will be easy, uh, it will be interesting for you to know these styles and also browse through these presentation tools so that you are aware of these things. And later on you can do a call, you can take a call of what technology or presentation style you want to choose for your own topic. But you should be at least aware of these things. So that was the idea of this thing. So let us, uh, so I will post uh, some links which will uh, make you uh, use these tools and you can decide on what tool you want to use. And for your presentation, you can choose any one of them. There is no certain uh, rule that you have to use only X or Y technology. So that would be for the class after the Tuesday's class. So next Thursday would be the deadline for that. In between, you can browse through the tools and try to get more information about it. Okay. Any questions on this? If not, you can just start giving back those sheets. Uh, we will collect them and try to post it. We are done for today. If there are no more questions.